Today, let's talk about the relationship between manga and the discrete Fourier transform on color e-ink, featuring Kindle Comic Converter 9. Alright, first off, let's go over what color e-ink actually is. It's just a normal black and white monochrome e-ink panel underneath an RGB color filter. And this photo shows it from the side, and this photo shows it from the front. So right now you can see there's a black and white monochrome e-ink panel in the back. You can see the white part sticking out between all the red, blue, and green stickers. That makes the color filter array. And if you zoom out far enough, it'll look white. Or if you've actually seen them, it really looks kind of grayish. But yeah, that's what color e-ink looks like. And this is why the color resolution is half of the black and white resolution, because of these little 2 by 2 things. But yeah. And to be really explicit, this is, you can see, in these two photos, you can see the black and white parts switching. So you see, you can't really see the color when it's black, but you can see the colors when the ink is in the white mode, but it's blocked in the black mode. But yeah, that's how color ink works with Kaleido 3 technology. Okay, so let's think about the original problem that we were wanting to talk about. Rainbows on color ink. So what would cause a rainbow? Well, basically, if there's a section of pixels that all happen to exactly line up the white pixels, line up on all the green sections. So that means in that portion of the image, you would only see green. And then if you vary this pattern a little, you'll end up seeing rainbows where there weren't originally rainbows in the original black and white image. So we've reduced this problem. We want to blur diagonal edges to get rid of patterns that result in rainbows. So there's multiple ways to do it. The simplest way is to just blur everything. That would definitely break up all those sharp edges, all those sharp diagonal edges, but obviously that makes things a lot blurrier. You can see all the sharpness and crispness of the lines have been lost if you just do a global blur. So yeah, what's the better solution? And also, Kobo does this with its reduced rainbow function, but yeah. But what's the, there's a better way to do this. Enter the 2D discrete Fourier transform. Alright, this is actually a pretty advanced concept, so I won't be explaining everything, but there are plenty of resources online on how to learn about it. And the one that really clicked for me was Digital Image Processing, A Practical Introduction Using Java by Nick Efford. I skipped all the parts about Java since I don't use Java for Kindle Comic Converters Python, but yeah. But I'll just give, give a brief overview. Basically, any signal, in this photo here example, you can construct any signal by just adding together a bunch of sine waves of varying frequencies. So you can see that if you add a bunch of sine waves, you can even get something that looks like that boxy function over there, where it's just like, yeah, it's pretty crazy, honestly. And a signal, let's just think about a 2D signal. These are, you can construct any image just by adding a bunch of 2D sine functions, basically. Um, so you see this is a sine function in the one-dimensional case, and this is what a sine function would look like in a two-dimensional case. And you can see the bottom of the sine wave is black, and the top of the sine wave is white, and all the in-between values are various shades of gray. But yeah, basically, you have the Fourier transform, you can represent an image as a bunch of sine waves combined together. It's, it's a pretty crazy thing. And I'll just go jump straight to the conclusion. The key idea is, is the sharp edges are created by high frequencies. So let's go back to the 1D case. You can see as you add more and more sine, sine wave functions of greater frequencies, you can, it, you can create you can make a signal with really sharp edges. And then if you actually examine all the Fourier transforms, you'll see that the direction of the edge of a picture is perpendicular to its edge in the Fourier transform. So you can see in the first column, if the image was basically just a horizontal line, then the Fourier transform is just a big vertical line. And yeah, whew, I skipped a lot of steps, but this is the basic idea. And let's just quickly go over what we did before. A low-pass filter removing all high frequencies is a global blur. Remember, you need high frequencies to create edges, so if you remove all the high frequencies, all the edges get blurred out. And you can see in this picture of the lady, she gets really blurry. However, if we mask the Fourier transform like this, where we only remove frequencies in those four corners where the yellow part is, then we only blur basically the, the diagonal edges, which is, what we exit, which is what we were wanting to blur in the first place. This preserves much more sharpness, especially since text is mostly horizontal and vertical edges. And the exact thresholds we decided on this were determined experimentally for the best looking result. This is highly oversimplified. You can read the code for full details. But let's just go over the final result. You see, this is the original image. You can see rainbows. And this is the old rainbow blur. 
And here's the new rainbow eraser algorithm that only blurs diagonal edges, and you can see just how sharp and clear it is compared to it, compared to what we had before. This is way better than any of the algorithms that Kobo implemented. And yeah, uh, just say, remember, I did not write this algorithm in Kindle Common Converter and only recently learned about the Fourier transform, so it's possible I got some details wrong, but I hope this video gave you like some sort of intuition about how useful the discrete Fourier transform is. If you want to learn more about it, I highly recommend you check out you learn about the discrete case first. It's a lot easier to comprehend than the continuous case. And yeah, and this algorithm is highly optimized for Kaleido 3. Kaleido 3 is the one on the right. You can see the rainbows there. But other color eating technologies have different pixel arrangements, so you'd probably need a different algorithm for that. And yeah, that's basically it. If you like this sort of content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.